Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining my session and this talk will be about technical documentation. How can I write them better and why should I care? And when I say I, I of course mean also you. So first of all, hi, my name is Hila Fish. I'm a senior DevOps engineer and the work for Wix. I have 15 years of experience in the tech industry. Recently, I have joined the AWS Community Builders program, which allows me to connect with like-minded people and learn in depth uh, on AWS uh, services, which is awesome. I help uh, co-organize conferences related to DevOps where I live in Israel, DevOps Days uh, Tel Aviv and StatCraft Monitoring Conference. I'm a mentor in courses and communities. I'm a co-manager in a community for open source in Facebook and we have physical meetups. And I also lead uh, some programs uh, for a very large community in Israel called Baot, which is which is uh, uh, the, the largest uh, technical women in tech community because I really like to to help people. Um, I believe that DevOps uh, culture fan is what drives companies to achieve great things. And I'm a lead singer in a cover band, as you can see in this picture, which is a lot of fun. Okay, so I believe that anyone can and should write uh, technical uh, documents because in the middle of the night, when I have uh, a production incident, I really don't care if I came across a runbook with a lousy English or, or fabulous English. As long as I have a runbook that helps me uh, solve the issue, I'm good, I'm satisfied, I'm content. So it's all about the knowledge. Uh, if you uh, provide knowledge with whatever you do because you maintain the system or you implemented something that only you know and you need uh, or want your team members to know as well because they need to support it for production incident they need to support it in the day-to-day -day. so whatever knowledge that you have please share it uh, through technical documentation it will help us in production incidents it will help us in the day-to-day -day. so uh, it's always awesome so as long as what you write is useful and concise and clear we can all benefit from it I always say, if you can't automate it, document it. And a lot of things can be considered as a technical documentation. So system logical design, of course, but also on color handbooks, like I explained, code readmes, right? Because we need to explain uh, certain functionalities if it's not that clear and also intentions and why this function behaves in a certain way and stuff like that. Onboarding docs. Why put someone uh, with you when you start your uh, new job? Uh, if you can have a, a, an onboarding, uh, onboarding documentation that can help you achieve whatever you need to learn, like about the systems, about who to go to, to speak to, right? So onboarding doc can definitely be a te technical documentation that can help you um, learn whatever you need to do uh, and, and, and learn whatever you need to know on the go. Uh, project planning doc, of course, because we the, the projects that we have are technical and if we have a planning doc it's a technical documentation and also slack pinned messages as long as you provide uh, information uh, that is useful even slack pinned messages are considered to be technical documentation because they help you convey uh, some knowledge and uh, the thing about that is that you can say i don't know that much or i don't have the time to invest in all of these that's quite okay. As long as you um, deliver knowledge, it could be in any platform or any constellation that you uh, decide. As long as you provide the knowledge, uh, it will be much uh, better than before. So, this sentence. I know I can't uh, see you folks because I'm on the screen and you guys are too. Or the folks, sorry. So, how I'm, I, I'm, I assume that a lot of people here uh, said this sentence or heard this sentence throughout uh, their career that the code is self-documented. And people say, just read the code and understand what it's about. The code tells a story, yada, 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 right? Not, it's not the case. The code is not self-documented. A lot of the things and a lot of decisions that developers do are not that straightforward. And we need the documentation to understand why they did things in a certain way, how the functionality really works, what is expected and stuff like that, and intentions and reasoning and a lot of things. So I believe that the code, and I, I hope that you also believe that a lot of the code that we see is not self-documented. Uh, and that's why we need documentation to help us understand 
uh, anything uh, that accompanies the code. So let's also uh, dive into it and understand why even write technical documentation. So first of all, to reduce your work volume. And you can say, wait, reduce? If I sit down and write documentation, then it's not reducing my work volume. It's increasing it because I'm spending time on writing documentation, right? So actually, no, think about it this way. Or even I'll tell you a story to, to emphasize. So in, in one of my previous companies, I, as a DevOps engineer, <clears throat> I uh, ma maintain the dev and the production environments. And a lot of the times QA and uh, dev uh, personnel approached me and said, hey, my pod in the Kubernetes cluster X is uh, red. How can I troubleshoot it? Or I have this issue. What do I do with it? And stuff like that. And I had like seven or eight times a day, uh, people getting, uh, uh, people approaching me. So I gathered all the, um, all the approaches that were uh, repeat repetitive, right? The people that basically ask the same things. And I created a documentation that I called it like a tips and tricks by DevOps. And I covered everything that they asked. And then I had a meeting with them. Anyone that uh, went to Zoom, I showed them the documentation. I went through all of the all of the bits uh, there. And after I sent them the documentation, really, they, it was self, uh, they, they were able to uh, use it uh, without me. And from seven or eight times a day that I was approached, it was decreased to uh, one or time ten, one or two times a, a day. So that's what I mean by reducing your work volume. Because yeah, you sit down and you invest this one hour or two hours to write this documentation, but in the long run, it will reduce your work volume uh, because people uh, in in my uh, ex um, example that I gave, people now have a procedure to follow instead of bugging you, right? So uh, this is. Um, a very good thing to do and also it uh, helps communicate things to your managers because it shows the extent of your work and if you're a team player and really a team player not just something that you uh, write in a cv um self-service enablement to increase the velocity so another example that i can give for the documentation that i wrote is uh, I had a, a very big project to migrate from Bitbucket to GitLab, all of our R&D code base. And since I knew that most of the R&D uh, folks didn't know uh, GitLab, so I created a document to understand, to, to elaborate uh, important things when you just start out with GitLab, also how to change the um, local repository from uh, the a remote origin of Bitbucket to it to GitLabs, and why did I do that? Yeah, you can search for it online, uh, online right? But this created a sense of uh, ownership uh, in their eyes. They knew that if there there's any issue, they can come to me. But it also allowed them self service enablement because they could just use this doc document and just run and start using uh, GitLab uh, on their own. So that was uh, awesome because it helped them to even adopt the tool uh, faster, which is what we all want. <clears throat> and another uh, more examples for uh, self-service enablement is the onboarding docs that I mentioned before. And also for the velocity, any doc with troubleshooting, either the one that I explained before or any other uh, document that will help you troubleshoot will eventually make you be self-service. And even if you create Slack bots that answer like a Q and A, this would be awesome because people ask, they get the, the response and then uh, they can uh, continue with the, their professional life. Uh, so yeah, that's that. Eliminate production incidents uh, quicker. As I explained, if we have an on-call run books, it will help us uh, when we have an issue, it will decrease a mean time to resolution and it will help uh, the company to meet their SLAs, right? Because if I know exactly what to do, since I have a runbook, then uh, the issue will get uh, fixed sooner and then the SLA will get uh, met. Another good, good, very, very good reason to uh, write documentation is to avoid single point of failure or bottleneck, which is you. Because, hey, you tell me. Do you want to go uh, on vacation and still be available for work calls? Or do you want to go on vacation with a clear head, right? This, this is exactly that. And also I will just say it here, job security is dead. Okay, don't try to hold on to information 
because you think this way your job will be secured no more share the knowledge you will be much more appreciated and you'll still be valuable I, I i can assure you the next reason is to help make things clear for you or the future you right because once you structure things and write them down in a clear manner it will organize it in your mind as well and visibility this way if you write a commendation it will attract focus to the things that you do at work which in turn will help you uh, progress your career because if they know that you do stuff then uh, it's the visibility will help you achieve whatever you want uh, in your career and last but not least uh this helps us understand why are we doing things in a certain way for example, the, the GitLab uh, documentation that I wrote after the, the migration that I did, I wrote the documentation for my team members, right? To be able to manage uh, GitLab as well, even though I did it alone, I wanted to, to, to be able to, uh, to manage it. So I covered everything like uh, the integration itself and a certificate and why did I set certificates here? Uh, also for Terraform, right? You can uh, document why the model is complex and why did you choose to do uh, x instead of following clean code practices like uh, do not repeat yourself and keep it simple so a lot of things can be uh, uh, documented in, on, in order to understand why are we doing things in a certain way and also it will help us defend the decisions that we are taking and to co communicate them to others and another thing is that it will help you develop your uh, business mindset and will make you a better engineer why because always asking the why will result in you striving for the best solution and implementation possible okay so we covered the uh the why right and now let's cover the how and i, I, I really want to show you that you don't have to be a technical um, writer in order to write technical documentation it's not it's really not needed you can write in any level of english that you want and there are basically uh, certain rules when we write technical documentation. And this is what I exactly want to show you here, how to write technical documentations without being a technical writer. So let's start. First of all, you need to know your audience because based on your audience, you will know uh, what needs to be covered and to which extent. So uh, let's first understand if the document that you write is for internal use, like system design, etc., or <coughs> external use like API documentation for users, etc. So when we think about the internal use, what do you write about? So uh, things you worked on while working on them, because we remember things better when they are fresh in our minds. Things that bugged you, so other people won't run into them as well. For example, the, the GitLab migration that I did, the, at the end of the, the documentation, I even added a section of how to open a support ticket to GitLab in a way that will prevent the ping pong between you and them because you need to open a ticket and uh, if you don't provide the logs up front even though you can definitely do it they have like a tool that you that helps you collect the, the logs if you didn't you can open a ticket wait two three uh, days if it's not that urgent and then please provide us logs so I show them exactly what needs to be run with that tool in order to open the ticket uh, already with the logs provided and that way the logs the, the ping pong will get uh, averted and that that is awesome because it will save us time so um so yeah anything that bugged you or you can avoid uh, people from uh, running to them as well can be very good to to document as well things that aren't clear or straightforward because I will give another example from GitLab because uh, it's it's a very good one that covers a lot of uh, things here so when I did the migration, I used a certain uh, GitLab DB version, which is not the default in the Helm chart. So why did I use this different GitLab DB version? If I don't um, specify it, if I don't document it, they can't know. And then maybe they'll say, hmm, that's strange. And then they will uh, change it to the default, even though I had a very good reason to, to use the non-default version. So uh, that is uh, one example. Another example is, if the code isn't clear, then explain the flow with describing actual functions. It will be very, very helpful for whoever needs to uh, dive into that code. 
For external use, which is uh, users or consumers, you should uh, document what the code or whatever you're writing about, what is it about, possible use cases, and quick start. You should also write about quirks or issues or things to consider when using this X. And also examples, both simple and complex, to help your user uh, use it to the best, um, best ability. The next phase of the writing documentation is to decide or abide upon a documentation type. So some companies still have docs in KB, knowledge base, right? Like Confluence or something like that. And some uh, companies progress to docs as code, which is to interact with docs in your IDE. And basically docs are fully integrated into the dev tool chain. Developers don't need to leave the IDE in, in order to write documentation, which is uh, pretty awesome. So when I, write, when I say decide or abide upon, sometimes you are the decision maker and you can choose to move to docs as code. And sometimes you uh, are not uh, able to decide or, um, and you need to, to just go with uh, docs in, in a knowledge base, knowledge base, but sometimes you can try to uh, convince and say, hey, I saw this uh, presentation and they showed us the uh, docs as code, uh, which is looks pretty awesome. So maybe we should uh, move to that. And I will indeed um, uh, cover why docs as code is very, very good. So either you decide uh, to go with any of these, whatever suits you best, or just abide upon whatever documentation type is currently existing, or try to convince to, to move from one to another. So before we dive to docs code, I'm gonna give you uh, a general content guidelines that will help you when you write a document. So first of all, you need to have table of contents. It is essential for content discovery. And why is that? Because of the user flow. I've, I found uh, a document from 1997, okay? A long time ago that uh, shows that uh, people don't read, they scan. And this is why I wanna show you this uh, flow, user flow. So people, first of all, search for something. So that's why you need to have meaningful titles and subheadings to help the user um, search uh, and find a, a more exact uh, results. And then whatever they find, whatever they found, they scan the document to check if it is uh, useful uh, for, not, for them or not. If so, awesome, they will get the results that they needed. If not, they will navigate to another uh, document. So also put in your document any links that could help uh, the user uh, achieving whatever they want to do. Maybe it's not covered in your document, but it is covered in another one that you can link. So put the links and you can think about it like a microservices concept, right? So each document stands as a standalone document, but they can communicate between each other like microservices. So um, just if you write something and the, this, that documentation has a certain theme, and there is a further information or something that is a bit niche, then just put a link and that's uh, basically uh, it. Um, another uh, uh, important guideline is highlights. So put things in bold if they are important. And also um, in, in regards to bold, why? Because again, people uh, doesn't, uh, they don't read, they scan. And since they skim through uh, the document and not really reading them to the fullest, we need to help them do that. And how? By putting things in bold and showing them what we think is uh, important. And in regards to colors, this is a bit controversial because some people have accessibility issues, colorblind, uh, colorblindness and stuff like that. But uh, specifically in my uh, experience, I did a came to, to understand that if I use colors, people uh, react to it better. And if they didn't notice the bold, but when I put something in red, oh, okay, okay. So just bear that in mind. And if you, if the people around you in the, in the company doesn't have accessibility issue, then you can use colors and it will be uh, good. Uh, in regards to words and sentences, so you should always aim to have short words and more sentences rather than longer words and fewer sentences because again this will help people skim through the document when there are uh, short words when you need to uh, not even read but you know scan it uh, fast so this is uh, the way to go and simple english use simple english please don't try to be shakespeare 
quite simple American English that non-English speakers can easily understand. This is very, very important. So let's move to uh, Docs code. Uh, basically, Docs code is, or oh, let's say all the uh, guidelines that I just showed before applies to both docs in a, in a knowledge base and in docs code but this is like a, an extension uh, that relies to that uh, that is relevant only to docs code so docs code uh, it is using markdown uh, and markdown is a, a pr pretty much a platform agnostic language you can use it whatever and wherever you want it is easy, easy to write and diff plain text so so it is human readable and you can uh, incorporate anything the table of contacts that, that i showed you uh, before highlights and even uh, colors so that's uh, pretty awesome uh, when we in docs code the doc the docs um, folder is in the same code repo so the docs are integrated in the dev tool chain and you don't need to leave the ide in order to write a uh, documentation which is awesome for our developers you can do PR review uh, to make sure that the document is in a high quality and even that the document exists because if people didn't add documentation, you can fill the PR and say, hey, documentation is missing, please add it, and then the PR can be uh, merged. And also CICD. Uh, there are um, abilities to do, once the do docs are uh, as code, you can do validations, make sure there are no broken links, put even linters, and you can even use uh, this tool called Docosaurus, which is a, a tool that allows you to push code to a front end to see the docs in a UI portal. So let's say you have a lot of documentation, this way it will help you uh, see it in a very um, visible and visual way. Uh, and it also lets you, this tool also lets you do uh, docs versioning uh, and stuff like that. So, and also this is a, a, a quote from Google. They say that dogs thrive when they are treated like tests. A necessary chore one learns to savor because it rewards over time. And that's basically it. If you invest in tests and validations and stuff like that, it will be rewarded over time because you'll see the docs will be in a high quality state. They will always be updated, which is a very uh, a, a great pain for us uh, to have because it's very hard to maintain a documents versioning and updates if we don't have this mindset, right? So this tool can help and, and this process can really help us and make sure the documentation is updated uh, and that we have tests to make sure that it, the documentation is in high quality state, uh, etc. So back to route, the next phase in writing a technical documentation is to remember your audience. So first we said, know your audience. Now you need to remember them when you write the document. You need to have the user flow in mind in and between sections and to make sure that the document order that you write is written in, in a way that is from the most used to the rarely uh, used. So let's say, again, the GitLab uh, example, I started out with how to upgrade because this will be basically the thing that they will do the most, especially with GitLab, they release versions very, very quickly. And then certificates, uh, integrations, which is like a one-time thing, and then the support and stuff like that. So I really try to order it in a way that will be uh, very uh, uh, from the most used to the rarely used. Concept versus tasks. So since you need to remember your audience, you need to think about what your audience wants. So if the audience wants to know something, aka concepts, include in the documentation information, background, explanations, reasoning, uh, and intentions. But if the audience wants to do something like tasks, then the document needs to be a how-to uh, document and don't confuse the two or don't mix the two because this is not what the audience wants. Sometimes I just want to do something and I don't care about the information or the background behind it and I just need to do something. So you can do the how-to and just put a link. If you want to read more about the system, click here and then I will definitely click if it will be relevant and also vice versa. If I want to do some, if I want to know something, I will read it. And then in the link below, if you want to know how to do X or Y, then have the links and then uh, connect them to, to that part. So don't confuse the two because then it will be very hard for the uh, audience to find whatever they need and just keep it to what they want to know. 
the last section of like writing a document technical documentation is to share it with others because uh, we want to make sure that what we wrote is really helpful sometimes things are very straightforward to us but then when we give it uh, to others to read and say no it's not that clear i'm, I'm not sure what you meant uh, here when you wrote that or also they will say but wait what about x and z and then they will they will remind you things to cover that you again thought as straightforward but for them it's not straight, straightforward so they will uh, ask you to edit and then the document will be much more uh, rich um, uh, thorough and uh, more concise and clear so feedback is very very important in that regards before i move to the next slide please don't try to read it it's just a take a picture um slide okay so this is i uh, explained that basically this presentation is if you want to write technical documentation without being a technical writer but if you do want to perfect your english if you do want to make your um document uh, the, the documents in a bit higher quality state uh, english wise then i did con consult with a colleague of mine uh, which is a technical writer uh, joshua Schulgassel, and he provided me with these uh, writing tips so just take um a screenshot of this these tips and it will help you uh, create documents in high quality uh, English wise okay so that's basically it um, and if you say that hey I'm not a technical writer and I don't remember what you said here because you covered a lot of things at least take this golden rule which is to provide readers with the information they need and send them back to their task as soon as possible the commentation should be clear simple and to the point because what you write is very useful and helpful as long as it is concise and clear if it's concise and clear and to the point and people will uh, get what they need out of it it's, it will be very helpful very much needed so please please do it uh, and uh, one note for uh, managers is that if you want to make sure documentation is present uh, and people are really writing documentation make it an integral part of a task aka the task definition of done is once documentation was added and that way you know exactly that uh, the task is not done until uh, the person dealing with the task added the documentation and then you make sure it is part of the day-to-day uh, -day, uh, that we have so i hope that after this presentation you can no longer say that your code is self-documented. You can say that the code is well-documented. Thank you so much. If you have any questions about technical documentation or any other DevOps or SRE uh, topics, you're more than welcome to reach out and I'll be uh, more than happy to help you. Thank you so much.